Welcome to your cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sack with special thanks once again to uh, Mark Tracy and David Jonas. Mark and David provide beautiful music for over four years now, so David and Mark, thank you. This weekend we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. I'd like to begin this way. How many of you remember the famous Olympic skier in the 1990s? Her name was Peekaboo Street. Peekaboo was not only a great athlete, she is now a nurse. We're currently working at an intensive care unit of a large metropolitan hospital. However, she is no longer permitted to answer the hospital telephone any longer in the intensive care unit. It's because she's caused much too much confusion when she would answer the phone and say, Peekaboo, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't saved you that one for a while. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity and Peekaboo, I see you. Every time we make the sign of the cross, we are reminded that God is our Father and Creator, Jesus is the Son and Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is the Sanctifier. Ergo, the Holy Trinity. Also think of it this way. When we make the sign of the cross, which we can take so much for granted, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We do it because, Lord God, to be in my mind, to be in my heart. And this, you must wonder, why is this in this here? And it's because the widest part of the human body is tip to tip of the shoulder. So Lord God, always be in my mind and in my heart and in my whole being, amen. The late Cardinal Avery Dulles once saw a banner that said, God is other people. He added a comma and changed it to, God is other, comma, people. So he saw it as, God is other people, God is other people. God is other, but wants a profound relationship with each and every one of us. Many metaphors over the centuries have been employed to depict and explain the Trinity. St. John of Damascus, a great Eastern theologian of the eighth century, said we should think of the Father as a root, the Son as a branch, and of the Spirit as fruit for the sustenance of these three in one. Today we celebrate the central understanding of our faith, our belief in the God who has revealed himself as Father, the root that sustains life, the Son and the Word of God who grafts us as branches to that life, and the Spirit, the harvest of God's love in all, binding all three. But ultimately, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity is about relationships. It's about relationships. Listen to this story. David Servan Shriver, an article many years ago entitled Against All Odds, an old magazine. It went like this. At the age of 50, Martin already had two coronary bypass operations. His arteries were so clogged that a third surgery was totally out of the question. Martin had to stop smoking, change his diet, and regu exercise regularly. This is now was truly a matter of life and death. But Martin could not bring himself to change. He was way too heavy. He had stopped exercising years before. And after his divorce, he hardly ever saw his children. And when he did, the tension was unbearable. His workload as an attorney had grown so bad and to the point he even gave up his favorite pastime activity, playing jazz piano at evening jam sessions with all his friends. His last true friends 
were his dogs and desserts. But deep inside, he didn't find the idea of adding more years to his life, his dreary life, all that inspiring. But one day, Martin finally brought himself to change. The decisive step was managing to reconnect with his children. His doctor sensed Martin's yearning to teach, teach his son to play jazz and to help his daughter set up her internet site. The physician also encouraged Martin to pursue his interest in becoming a mediator in conflict resolutions. Now Martin could change his smoking and eating habits. He discovered more pleasure in changing than in not changing. He wanted to be a father to his children and to contribute to society in his new work as a mediator. Now, three years later, Martin says, with a smile that warms his heart, my disease was the best thing that ever happened to me. The best motivation to change is not in the fear of dying, but rather in the joy of living. That's a great line. The best motivation to change is not in the fear of dying, but rather in the joy of living. If you want to find real joy in life, turn outward and not inward. Live for others, serve others, help others. And maybe that is why the church in her great wisdom often uses or it offers us the doctrine of the Trinity. Blessed as we are with unlimited curiosity and imagination, we must, in our deep desire to know God and to love God, come to realize that in the end, God is always wrapped in holy mystery. God is always wrapped in holy mystery. And that's not anything wrong with that. We'll never figure out God. We're not going to even figure out ourselves. Holy mystery is part of life. Maybe the purpose of the doctrine of the Trinity is not so much to define God as it is to invite us into the mystery of God. And inviting us into the mystery of God, we are invited into the mystery of life. If you take the word life, L-I-F-E, smack in the middle of the word life is the word if. We are not in control. And part of this mystery of life is about loving, sharing, relationships, and forgiving. And the invitation is this, to be swept away by the mystery of life and love without always having to have the answers and encountering God where we would least expect to find him in relationships, in love, in mercy, in forgiveness. However, many times we become our own worst enemy we get in our own way, or think we can outdo God. The famous Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, answered, people. He said this, because they sacrificed their health in order to make money. Then they sacrificed, or they sacrificed his money to recuperate their health. And then he is so anxious about the future, he doesn't enjoy the present. The result being, he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he is never going to die, and then dies having never really lived. Powerful words. Do you want to experience God's love? Love someone. Do you want to experience new life? Be life-giving to others. Do you want to be forgiven? Stop holding grudges. Let go of the past. Do you want God to answer your prayers? Meet someone's needs. Learn to share and be opened. Learn to share and be opened. We shouldn't have to go through the challenges of life alone, and others shouldn't either. Let's always be there for each other. The Father, Son, and Spirit will show us the way. For God is always with us and chasing after us. I've mentioned this many, many times, so many times. No one can go back and start a new beginning. But starting today, we can create a new ending 
with the help and grace of God. Amen, and may God bless all of you. A blessed Memorial Day weekend. Create wonderful memories, and we pray for all those in our history who have died in service and love of our country. Amen. <laughs>